Good morning once again, sir. So this is the second topic that I chose, which came from chapter 3 of the PowerPoints that you have given us. So just a little bit of introduction about my topic, which is about portfolios. So portfolios were popular in the 1990s, but their use decreased. It's because of these two main reasons. We have concerns about reliability, growing importance of large-scale accountability tests, but they are making a comeback. It's more exciting and engaging through digital possibilities, and it increased scrutiny on basing teacher evaluation on students' academic progress. So what are portfolios? Portfolios are prominently used in art, architecture, modeling, photography, and journalism. They document proficiency, skill, style, and talent with examples of actual work. In education, a portfolio is a purposeful systematic process of collecting and evaluating student performative and or summative assessments to document progress toward the attainment of learning targets. They are limited, meaningful collection of work and they include guidelines for the selection of contents, criteria for scoring, and student self-reflection. Way back when I was still in grade 12, we were told to make a portfolio. After the immersion that we have, we were told to compile all the outputs that we have from that immersion and we make it as a portfolio. So I would say that it's very difficult, it's very um, time consuming. At the same time, I, I can learn so much from it. And it's very nice to also share the progress that you have when it comes to learning in that certain time. So that's it. Next is, how would you be able to determine that the portfolio that you have is effective? First is that it is purposeful. It is systematic and well organized. It contains meaningful work, has pre-established guidelines. It engages students in selection, evaluation, and reflection. It motivates students and it documents progress based on clear, well-specified scoring criteria. So these are the characteristics of effective portfolios. They clearly define purpose aligned with learning targets, standards, and 21st century skills. They are systematically organized collection of student work products, high student engagement and motivation, individualized student artifacts, pre-established guidelines used to establish contents, some student selection of contents, student self-reflection, clear and appropriate criteria for evaluating student products, and conferences held between students and teacher to review and evaluate. So there are two major types of portfolio. The first one is documentation portfolio. It shows student work that illustrates achievement. And the next one, we have growth portfolio, which reveals change in student proficiency over time. So table 11 to 1 shows different types of portfolios. So these are the different types of portfolios and its example. We have number one, documentation or the celebration. This shows students' best work, like for example, highest score test, highest graded paper, best project. And number two, documentation or the competence. This shows the level of achievement reach in relation to learning targets. Like for example, mastery of each competency needed to do electrical work. Number three, documentation or the project. It illustrates competence on completion of a single task. Like for example, history unit final presentation, small group project on identifying chemicals in a water sample. And lastly, we have the growth. It shows improvement of student competence over time. Examples of these are examples of writing that shows differences in skills and drawings from the first part of the semester to the last week of semester. So that would be all for this topic, sir, and thank you very much.